Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiangjun in Beijing. In the Italian city of Pisa, there is a freestanding bell tower that dates from medieval times. What makes this particular tower really special is that it's leaning. Well, the leaning tower of Pisa may be famous, but it's not unique. A tendency to lean is a common problem with many ancient structures around the world. Take the thousand-year-old Great Wild Goose Pagoda, for example. A symbol of the ancient city of Xi'an in Shanxi province, it inclines to the northwest by about one meter. The lean isn't as great as the 3.9 meters of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but it's enough to have caused considerable concern. In 1996, the nation's media were all scrambling to report an astonishing item of news. Great Wild Goose Pagoda, a structure serving as a major emblem of the city of Xi'an in Shanxi province and a key cultural heritage site under state protection, was leaning away from the vertical line by more than a meter. Moreover, the tower was continuing to sink into the ground. The fate of the 1,000-year-old Great Wild Goose Pagoda had become the focus of considerable attention. But what had caused Great Wild Goose Pagoda to lean to this extent? How was the extent of the deviation from the vertical line determined down to the millimetre? And what, precisely, is the current condition of Great Wild Goose Pagoda? The original name of Great Wild Goose Pagoda was Temple of Mercy and Benevolence Pagoda, and it stood within the grounds of the temple of the same name in the ancient capital of Xi'an. Temple of Mercy and Benevolence was first built in the Sui Dynasty around the end of the 6th century AD, and it was thereafter known as the No Leak Temple. In 648 AD, during the Tang Dynasty, Li Zhu, the then crowned prince, arranged for additions to No Leak Temple in order to commemorate his deceased mother's learning and virtue and her care and mercy. Thereafter, the temple was known as the Temple of Mercy and Benevolence. After these extensions were added, the highly eminent monk Xuanzang moved into the temple, and there he spent 19 years translating 74 Buddhist sutras. Xuanzang also founded the Temple of Mercy and Benevolence School of Buddhism at the site, and pilgrims began to flock to the temple as its renown spread far and wide. In 652 AD, Li Zhu, by that time Emperor Tang Gaozong, ordered the building of the Temple of Mercy and Benevolence Pagoda and charged Xuanzang with the responsibility of overseeing its construction. The pagoda would house the Buddhist scriptures Xuanzang had brought back from India. In the final years of the Tang Dynasty, however, the courtyard of the Temple of Mercy and Benevolence became a victim of the ravages of war. The Great Hall was completely razed by fire and only the pagoda survived. But how did the Temple of Mercy and Benevolence become known as the Great Wild Goose Temple? It is said that one day a goose and a flock of wild geese flying overhead suddenly plummeted from the sky and fell dead on the temple. The monks concluded that this goose had been an incarnation of the Buddha and therefore resolved to build a new pagoda on its behalf. It was then named the Great Wild Goose Pagoda. The Great Wild Goose Pagoda was initially a five-story structure, but over time it became a tower with ten stories. Empress Wu Zetian had the pagoda rebuilt into a seven-story blue brick tower with a pavilion. This version of the pagoda reached a height of 64.517 meters, but there were yet more renovations to come. In 1556, during the Ming Dynasty, an earthquake which would have registered eight or higher on the Richter scale struck the central Shanxi Plain, and the temple next to Great Wild Goose Pagoda was destroyed. The pagoda itself, however, remained upright 
as it had for hundreds of years. Then 48 years later, in 1604, Xianning County, as it was known in that period, carried out comprehensive restoration and reinforcement work on the pagoda. More than 300 years after that, in 1961, the State Council of the People's Republic of China designated Great Wild Goose Pagoda, a key cultural heritage site, under state protection. In 1984, the Shanxi Province Cultural Relics Bureau and the Xi'an City Technology Bureau decided to strengthen the monitoring and protection of Great Wild Goose Pagoda. The project was put out to tender, and there were eight goals, including surveying the building structure, testing its earthquake resistance, and determining the groundwater levels beneath. But monitoring of the ongoing deformation of the building was listed as the number one priority. Bishanjanza,就是通过多期的测量工作,能够确定我们所关注的建筑物,呃,比如说桥梁,楼房,我们的一些文物,这些我们关注的目标的稳定性,也就是我们要必须要知道它在不同的历史时期, 它的平面上和垂直方向上一些变化变化的一个速率和量值，这就是我们所关心的。通过这些量值来进行安全的一些预防措施。By the time the number one large area survey team from the SBSM stationed in Xi'an received news of the tender, the process had almost been completed. They were the fifth and last group to submit a bid. The other four groups submitting bids were also from surveying units based in Xi'an. The criteria imposed by the Xi'an City Technology Bureau on these units in terms of margins of error were nothing less than exacting. Ben 但是由于丹塔的充血速度是比较慢的，所以要没有人家不及时这个一毫米的精度的话，这个实际上管是不是来丹塔的变化。所以人家提这个提的是比较科学的。Realizing they had no means of reducing the margin of error when monitoring Great Wild Goose Pagoda, all but one of the units bidding for the task withdrew their bids. In the end. Only the SBSM first team submitted a proposal. In it, they undertook to apply a relatively unique astronomical measuring method to achieve a breakthrough in monitoring, not only to within an accuracy and precision of two millimetres, but probably to within one millimetre. The SBSM team's proposal got the go-ahead, and monitoring of the tower commenced. Soon the monitoring staff concluded that the primary reasons for the tower's tilt and thus those not susceptible to amelioration were inherent in the structure of the tower itself, since in the final analysis the tower was a thousand years old. Nevertheless, this was no grounds for ignoring the ever-present environmental factors. The team adopted a combination of methods. Some developed locally, some overseas, to monitor the tower's structure and the ground surrounding it. They also installed several hundred monitoring devices. On each of Great Wild Goose Pagoda's seven stories, the monitoring staff installed a total of 168 monitoring devices at regular intervals on the inner wall, according to east, west, south and north orientations. The modal point on the first floor would serve as a reference, both to verify whether or not movement was occurring and to verify the relationship between each of the monitoring points. If movement was generated between any of the given points, this would determine the locus of movement in the tower. Mm -hmm. 
Staff conduct monitoring of the points at regular intervals to compare the tower stability in one year to its stability in another, the rate at which the ground beneath is subsiding, and the extent to which the structure is warping. In addition to the 168 main monitoring points, the staff also set up a further eight monitoring sensors on the tower's foundation. Around the tower's foundations, the monitoring staff distributed the eight monitoring points in the same way they were distributed inside the tower. These monitoring points form special monitoring rings, and similar rings also spread out across the ground around the tower. From the bedrock under Taiyi Palace on South Mountain, down through the foothills towards the southeastern part of the city of Xi'an to Great Wild Goose Temple, is a distance of 32 kilometres. Only local movement in the Earth's crust could have any effect on the stability of the Taiyi Palace bedrock reference point, and so this can be used as a base indicator of movement. As the Taiyi Palace bedrock monitoring point sits at an elevation above sea level, which is fixed, this point serves as a reference from which changes in the elevation above sea level of any point in the city of Xi'an can be monitored. This information can be used to further determine whether the area is subsiding or being uplifted. Each time the SBSM No. 1 team monitors Great Wild Goose Pagoda, they must first take elevation bearings at the Taiyi Palace Bedrock Reference Station and then proceed from there to the next closest station. In order to prevent errors, they must follow a predetermined route, taking new bearings at each station and proceeding in the same manner all the way to the Great Wild Goose Temple Reference Point. As they proceed, they must calculate the changes at each reference point and then in turn verify the situation regarding the perpendicular directional movement of Great Wild Goose Pagoda and its surroundings. On all of the tower's stories, monitoring personnel have installed reference sensors into wall openings on the tower's exterior in locations to the east, west and north. These can be used to monitor how the body of the tower is tilting and detect the amount of warping due to sunlight. The surveying personnel use these reference points by setting them to imaginary perpendicular lines. If the body of Great Wild Goose Pagoda tilts further, they can use the inclination of this line to arrive at a value which can be used to calculate the degree and direction of tilt. Because Great Wild Goose Pagoda has always been a tourist site and the main gate opens to the south where there is also a great hall, and also because a clear field of sight is required for surveying, the survey personnel did not install monitors on the south side of the tower. Monitoring the other three sides is more than adequate to ensure the entire tower is monitored. Every year in July, when the sunshine was strong from 1985 to 1988, the SBSM No. 1 team surveyors conducted sunlight deformation surveys. After referring to weather forecasts, they selected three days with clear skies 
and three overcast days on which to conduct uninterrupted synchronized monitoring. Their data revealed that no deformation was generated due to sunshine. However, by comparing the data collected on 12 occasions over three years, the surveyors discovered that these reference points had definitely registered changes, and these changes reflected an overall trend in the tilt. Great Wild Goose Pagoda was gradually tilting further and further from the southeast towards the northwest. In their three years of monitoring, the SBSM team managed to come to within an accuracy of one millimeter and thus meet the margin of error requirements set by the Xi An Institute of Metallurgy and Construction Engineering. In 1988, the SBSM No. 1 team won the unanimous endorsement of the Xi'an Municipal Science and Technology Committee and the Xi'an Institute of Metallurgy and Construction for its monitoring of the deformation of Great Wild Goose Pagoda. Twenty-two years have passed since the SBSM No. 1 team first began to monitor the ongoing deformation of Great Wild Goose Pagoda in 1985. The many years of monitoring demonstrated that as of the end of 1985, the tower's tilt to the northwest amounted to 998 millimetres, and that by 1996 it had reached 1,010 millimetres. But interestingly, from 1996, Great Wild Goose Pagoda has been reversing this trend. It is now moving back towards the southeast at a rate of approximately one millimetre per year. So what actually causes Great Wild Goose Pagoda to tilt? And why in 1996 did the pagoda suddenly change from tilting to the northwest and begin to shift back towards the vertical line? Some experts suggested that Great Wild Goose Pagoda's tilt was associated with other geological structures or movements because it sits on the edge of the Shanxi Fault. They believed that if the fault generated geological movement, this would of necessity cause the tower to tilt. Others, however, thought that the tilt might be the result of deficiencies in the makeup and structure of the pagoda, which has, of course, been subjected to damage over the course of a thousand years. It was also suggested that the tower began to tilt due to insufficient water drainage. What the data collected over many years has revealed is that the most significant factor in causing the pagoda to lean is the severe degradation of the local environment. The major problem is the over-exploitation of groundwater in the area, brought about by the expansion of Xi'an and the rapid growth of industry and agriculture. The fact is that from ancient times, Xi'an's water resource situation has been consistent. It is a city long starved of water. But from the 1980s, Xi'an has been in a constant state of alert due to water shortages. Tabiasu 每天日谷水 mid 1990s, the city of Xi'an had no choice but to extract more than 300 million cubic meters of groundwater. However, experts recognize that every year the exploitation of groundwater must be limited to below 200 million cubic meters in order to replenish the groundwater table. In 1995, the year in which the lean of Great Wild Goose Pagoda reached its highest value, the great strain already placed on water resources in Xi'an was exacerbated by continuing drought. The city of Xi'an was forced to dispatch fire engines, irrigation vehicles and street cleaning trucks to dispense water to the city's residents, and they lined up in long queues in front of the delivery trucks with buckets and jugs. Plastic water buckets sold like hotcakes, a bucket that normally sold for just 12 yuan 
suddenly rose in price to more than 20. This critical water shortage lasted more than a month. When a number of work units decided to resort to interim use of deep wells for their water needs, the result was unrestrained exploitation of groundwater. This behaviour resulted in excessive groundwater exploitation, which in turn generated Earth's subsidence. Consequently, many streets and building structures toppled or cracked. Among these, at a location 800 metres immediately to the north of Great Wild Goose Pagoda, a massive fissure appeared in the earth, damaging no less than 2,000 buildings. Chia 就是车车价下下大厉害，这个就引起了这个逐楼的急作，下车的三百五十九九十五个毫米，急作也被拉链了啊，大约它向西北方向倾斜了一米以上，呃，引起了严重的环境地质灾害。To solve the nagging, long-lasting problem of Xi'an's water shortages, early in December 1987, the city of Xi'an launched the Hei He River Diversion Project. The cost of this mammoth project, completed within a 14-year time frame, came to around 3.8 billion yuan. December the 31st, 2001 was a memorable day for the people of Xi'an, as on that day, the Xi'an Heihe River Water Conservancy project was largely complete and ready to be put into service. With the project realizing a daily water supply of 1.1 million tons and an annual delivery capacity of 400 million tons, Xi'an's water woes began to ease. At the time of the successful completion of the diversion project, the city of Xi'an also shut down 1,000 of its wells and banned excessive groundwater exploitation. With this, Xi'an's ground subsidence came under effective control and groundwater levels in the area surrounding Great Wild Goose Pagoda rose by more than four metres. Statistics gathered by the SBSM number one team reveal that in 1996, after the lean of Great Wild Goose Pagoda reached its highest value of 1,010 millimetres, the pagoda did not merely stop the speed of its lean towards the northwest, but actually began a sustained rebound toward the southeast. So far, it has already moved back 1,001 millimetres. To protect Great Wild Goose Pagoda's relics and antiquities, many surveying and mapping agencies were brought into the project. Early on in the monitoring of Great Wild Goose Pagoda, the caretaker office at the site undertook reinforcement, trussing and waterproofing maintenance and other protective measures. Presently, Great Wild Goose Pagoda is continuing to move back at a rate of one millimetre per year. But there are those who believe that this speed is too slow and they insist that other measures are also needed. Jubu 它就是补谈也好
Yanyan Yi Shu. It is hoped that the use of the mapping technology and the support of the Cultural Relics Preservation Department will help the Great Wild Goose Pagoda through its leaning phase unscathed. And with a little luck and the replenishment of the water table in Xi'an, it may just be that this ancient landmark will gradually return to its original position. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.